my name is Katie Floss, and I'm a member of Galvin Growth Group, and I'm here today with my colleague, Dr. Julia Kubek. She is a nationally certified school psychologist, and she recently earned her doctorate in school psychology from Loyola University, Chicago. In addition to her private practice work on our team, she is employed as a full-time school psychologist, and she has several years of experience working in both private and public therapeutic day schools specializing in treating the needs of youth with emotional and behavioral disorders. Thanks so much for being here with me today, Julia. Thanks for having me. What is your philosophy when working with children, parents, and educators? I take my general philosophy from the author and psychologist Ross Green. So if a student or even a person is struggling in some way, either emotionally or academically or with some sort of task behaviorally, I generally take the approach that those difficulties are due to an underlying skill deficit. So nobody wants to do poorly. Nobody wants to struggle. So when a person is struggling, uh, it's likely due to a lagging skill. And when we can identify what that lagging skill is, that gives us a starting point to solving that problem. And this, this process of identifying that skill and identifying supports really should be this collaborative problem-solving process. So working with the child or the client, working with the family, and any other key players like teachers or educators um, to help with not only identifying where the skill deficit is, but also the supports that that student might need to problem solve around those lagging skills and to really develop those skills so they can do as well as, as they would like to. I too am really passionate about the work of Dr. Green and I feel like it can translate to so many settings, whether it's the school setting or the private setting and really working with that child and bringing them into that process. So what a fantastic resource. What is the number one thing you find most unique about your approach as compared to other psychologists? I think what makes my practice unique um, is really my experience in schools where kids spend most of their time. So I've worked a lot with other educators and families to support educational needs of students. Um, I've worked with and studied the experiences of youth who have experienced involvement in the juvenile justice system. And that really did help me to engage with them and, and work to understand the experiences of such a diverse group of young people and really understand the unique challenges they face and ways that we can support them better in our schools, in homes, and in our communities. So I think what's unique about my practice is that I've really worked with so many different young people with so many different needs and experiences, and I've really developed my therapeutic practice to meet the needs of children even with the most intensive needs or behaviors. And I think, too, when you work with students with the most intensive needs and the most intense behaviors, you really, really master your ability to build relationships because that's, as we know, is the key. Um, And you have had a plethora of practice with that that applies to all of your work now. Absolutely. Relationship building is so important. And I think with that work with youth with trauma and those adverse childhood experiences, the relationship is the most important component of of that therapeutic work. So working with children and families in both the private and public school system really pushes, you know, as psychologists, our need to engage in that creative problem-solving practice. What tools or strategies do you incorporate into your problem-solving approach? So one framework that I've used for establishing relationships in order to really collaborate effectively is restorative practice work, um, which stems from restorative justice philosophy. And it's really this idea of working with people to help build and rebuild relationships and particularly resolve any issues or harm that might occur when there are interpersonal conflicts or any sort of problem. And I think that that's a tool that I really use a lot to help problem solve with families, with children, um, especially when they're having problems in school. And I think it can be a really helpful tool for helping people to communicate effectively. Fantastic. And I know restorative practice is something that is very heavily utilized in the school system and how unique that you're able to use those practices in the clinical setting as well. I certainly think it's one tool or one framework that absolutely translates between the private therapy setting and school settings, and I really like that about that work. 
If you're excited to engage in the collaborative problem solving process with Julia, head over to our website, galvingrowthgroup.com. You can head over to our G3 team tab on the website to read more about Julia and her experience. Or if you're ready to get to work, head over to our contact tab and fill out a contact form and mention Julia in your message. And we will be contacting you very soon. Thanks so much for being here with me today, Julia. Thank you, Katie.